Hello everyone! Today I will introduce what is sequential pattern mining. I will also explain how sequential pattern mining is different from association rules. Last but not least, I will show you how to implement sequential pattern mining in R using the algorithm cspade from the package A rule sequences. I will start by introducing the idea of a sequence. A sequence is a series of ordered events. For instance, after you watch Harry Potter 1, you are likely to watch Harry Potter 2, and then Harry Potter 3, and so on. Here's a consumer retail example. After buying a camera, the customer is likely to buy a color printer to print out the photos. And then a few months later, the printer runs out of ink, so the customer is likely to buy color printer ink. The business utility of sequence mining is that if you can predict the next product customers will buy, you can deliver a targeted advertisement, stock up on these goods in advance, and shelf or package them together. And finally, let's take a look at a healthcare example. Let's say we have a patient with lung cancer. They may start with PBC treatment, which is platinum-based chemotherapy. If the disease cannot be controlled, then they progress to anti-VGF treatments, which inhibit the vascular endothelial growth factor. And then they progress to EGFR treatments, which are tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And the scientific utility of this type of sequence mining is that we can uncover the patient journey. We can understand how people progress from one treatment to the next. We can also recommend what the next treatments should be based on what the patients had experienced in the past. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that sequential pattern mining is different from association rules. Sequence mining handles temporal data. The outputs look like A to B. It's interpreted as A is likely to happen before B. On the other hand, association rules usually cannot handle temporal data. The outputs look like A comma B. It's interpreted as A and B are associated and happen closely together. And this is what you will get using these Python functions, a priori, and association rules. Now let's delve into the R code and see how we can uncover interesting frequent patterns from repeated observations. The link to the R code is provided in the video description down below. We will be using a sequence mining tool called cspade, developed by Zaki in the year 2000. I encourage you to read the original paper to understand the inner workings of the algorithm. But today I will only focus on the practical side of things, showing you how to implement the algorithm. Inside our studio, we will start by loading the packages and the input data. There are three variables you must have, customer ID, purchase date, and product. Next, we will do some initial data cleaning. And let's talk about this part in detail. Here, we need to remove instances where the same product appears repeatedly. You can see how this unique customer has purchased uh, product A over and over again over time, and also product M. What we need to do in data cleaning is to remove these repeated A's and M's, and only the first unique records will be retained. Otherwise, the final output will be full of patterns like A to A to A to A, which is not very interesting. After the initial data cleaning, we have the following data frame. For instance, here we have a unique customer. They purchased three different things, product F, product C, and product T. An item ID refers to that FCT happened in this sequential order. We also need to do some cspade preprocessing, which is basically relabeling the variable names that we just saw so that cspade can understand the input data. And what these lines of code does is, is very simple. Um, so here we're going to rename product to items. Customer identifier will become sequence ID item ID will become event ID, and then purchase date is now gone. We also have a new variable transaction ID, 
which shows you how many rows of records you have. Now we will run the cspade algorithm. We will increase the parameter support to restrict the number of output sequences. Here, support equals 0 0.001, which means I only want to see sequences that occurred in at least 0.1% of all customers. And now we will output results to a CSV so that it's easier to read. The resulting CSV file looks like this. I have three variables here. Sequence is the frequent sequences that we are looking for. Support shows how often this sequence has occurred in the population. And pattern tells us whether this is a one item sequence, two item sequence, or three item sequences, and so on. Here, what we are seeing is that 57% of all customers have purchased product M. If we scroll down, we will see two item sequences. What this means over here is that 14.69% of all customers have purchased item M first, followed by product T. And following the same idea, let's take a look at a three item sequence. Here is showing that 2.8% of all customers have purchased uh, three things in a row. They purchased product M, then they purchased product F, and finally they purchased product T. So you're going to see that as you go down the list and increase the number of um, items in a sequence, you're going to find that it's becoming increasingly rare for people to have experienced this exact series of events. Now this is the end of the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you learned anything new from the tutorial. Thank you very much for your time and take care.